Hi friends, host Eric here, who's talking with famous people, and I'd like to uh, address this comment. First of all, this video is was the first video I had that was successful that people liked. Really, it's a twenty-minute long video. It got a lot of action when I first put it up, and it's what made me start doing MBTI videos. Really, I got another comment on it today. So I wonder if ENTP personalities correlate with high IQ. I find the idea of a low IQ ENTP rather odd. And it makes me want to discuss, revisit somewhat, the topic of intelligence and cognitive functions. I think a, an assessment of personality or, or attributes even of a human that doesn't account for attentional variance is kind of doomed, doomed to fail. So I made that first MBTI video, that's probably like the first one I ever made. And I made that a long ass time ago. I didn't really know anything about cognitive functions. I'm looking it up on the internet as I'm describing it. So, okay, well, what's the front of the stack again? Yeah. Uh, and obviously I've learned a lot about them since then. But, you're not going to encounter any real ENTPs who don't come across as smart. It's what ENTPs do best of all, probably, is come across as smart. So, if you're saying you can't really picture, or it seems odd to imagine a low intelligence ENTP, you're correct that you're not going to encounter any who seem dumb. But, that begs the question, or no, it elicits the question, or provokes the question, I guess it's the best verb to use there, it provokes the question, what's intelligence? So, technically, it's a score on an IQ test. I've never taken a formal IQ test, as far as I know. Uh, unless I was a little kid and my parents gave me more, I, I don't know. But I've never taken a formal, you know, calibrated normalized IQ test. So as a consequence, um, I don't know what my IQ is. I can take other kinds of tests that are that purport to tell you similar things, <coughs> but I don't know how reliable those tests are. And the thing is, IQ is meaningful insofar only as it correlates with other things. You know, your test on the score correlates with certain things pretty reliably but it, that correlation is only to the test on that the score on that test it's not to um, a quality that that test purports to to test for because IQ tests don't really test for a single quality they test for uh, a combination of intelligences so you know I don't love the multiple intelligence model in the sense that it seems to It seems to take from, when we're talking about somebody's intelligence, we're normally talking about their, their ability to deal with systems in some way. Um, the, some, some quality or capacity for academic style stuff that is absent in those who are of low intelligence, presumably. But, I mean, that's, that doesn't change the fact that really what intelligence refers to is deftness in a given area. And so it is meaningfully, it is meaningful to say that there are multiple intelligences. Regardless of whether you want to limit the word intelligence to things that are cerebral or abstract, it's still the case that there are multiple intelligences. Because we're looking at spatial intelligence that has to do with systems in space, which is very different than verbal intelligence or analogical intelligence, like my intelligence is analogical. Um, INTP's intelligence is more logical. So they're logical by nature, 
and analogical as a means of action. But I'm analogical by nature, and logical is a means of action, and it's a it's a very different kind of thinking, really. Even though INTP is, is similar to ENTP in their thinking as any other type can possibly be, which is to say quite similar. They have the same first two functions, and even though they're in the other reverse order, um, that makes us very similar in our thinking. But despite that, INTP will always be more logical than me. For me, it doesn't really matter if something's consistent or not, ultimately. It's a tool function that I use to determine the legitimacy of things, sure, but it's not determinant. So there's lots of things in life that I don't use that tool function for, and if I don't use that tool function for it, then um, it's sort of turned off. But when I'm using, but no matter what, I'm always using my dominant function. So that makes me analogical, because extroverted intuition with introverted thinking is analogical, with the extroverted intuition first. And what that means is I'm, I'm, constantly coming up with equivalencies of relationship um, as a means of understanding whereas INTPs are are constantly checking for logical consistency as a means of being and then being analogical as a means of doing whereas I'm logical as a means of doing so, um, you know, INTPs are going to score probably more highly on an intelligence test because they're more concerned with consistency, whereas, I mean, it's a matter of how you're processing stuff, right? It's, I'm, I'm looking for shortcuts all the time, basically. And that doesn't necessarily correlate with the best test scores. Now, I will tell you this. When I have taken things that purport to be like intelligence tests, um, I typically get around 130, 135 maybe. So that's higher than the average person probably, but not anything to write home about. Somebody said to me that Jordan Peterson has an intelligence of 160, but be that as it may, I don't feel, I, I mean, you know, I, I don't feel not capable of hanging or something like that. I don't feel intimidated by him at all. I'm quite confident that if we were to disagree about something, I'd win the argument. Does that make me smarter? I don't know. Probably not, I guess. I don't, it, that's the question is, are we talking about IQ or are we talking about smartness? Because how you're going to measure smartness is going to be a little bit different. I'm extremely, at the very uppermost end of the outlier status, and very narrow kinds of intelligence. Like, um, like argumentational stuff, right? People argue with me all the time and are often surprised at how quick I am. You know, like, I seem to have the answer ahead of time for everything. Well, that's both being a metaphysical actor by nature, having an extroverted intuition in the first slot, which means I'm improvisational by nature and am quick on my feet. But it's also years of experience. I mean, that's the other issue with intelligence is some of it is cumulative and some of it is in, innate. Um, underestimating the cumulative part significance is, is a mistake because ultimately we've got to understand intelligence through an observer's frame. I am an observer. 
I there's an I behind the projection of the metaphysical realm that represents the physical and there's an I behind the perception of the physical realm that produces experiences there's an eye to have those experiences right so it's important to remember that while we deal with functions and and such on two planes when we talk about them metaphysical and physical there's also an observational plane that's necessitated you have it's like in magic the gathering okay all your monsters and stuff do shit on the, the field and there's various things that can happen out there but ultimately the thing that makes it, that anchors the whole thing is that each player has a life point total and if you get through their defenses then you start attacking the player himself and he loses his life points. So it's important to remember that it's the same way with consciousness. Um, there's a, there's, there has to be a player there for the whole thing to work. Hence the, the single self illusion as some people call it or self concept which is not illusory at all. It, that would assume that it's necessarily <sighs> my understanding of what it means to be an identity is much more complex than the single self illusion would would assert or presupposes limits self concept in human beings in the first place so that we can we can belie that notion almost immediately that it's simply an illusion because if it were simply an illusion then that means, that implies that I'm either believing it or disbelieving it and it goes away, presumably, or it ceases to have any impact. But um, I'm engaging with the concept of being a self. I'm not just buying into it, right? And lots of people aren't. And I don't think that, it, I think it's reductive to say that people have this single self illusion where they mistakenly believe themselves whatever to be me I mean why are we imposing other on other people this limited limiting belief and if it is just a limiting belief then is it really a quality of being human or isn't it just a uh, a cognitive bias of some sort all right so let's see what's the last thing I want to say about intelligence and HP so the the key the key thing to remember is that ENGB has a primary skill verbal reasoning. And if you're really good with language and really effective at writing and, and speaking correctly and stuff like that. Then you're more than likely really bad at FD. Then you're gonna be perceived as intelligent regardless of whether that actually comprises intelligence or not. So, then we take you to a party and we see that you're very intelligent but you do not play well with others. Kind of like... So... The advantages of being articulate are many in life. And one of them is that you are supposed to be intelligent regardless of how actually effective your intelligence might be it is true that being ti intelligent goes along with prioritizing uh the meaning of words directly over the impact of words socially so you know you might be perceived by an fe tool user to be um socially awkward or something because they don't they, they use the they use extra feeling in a very physical capacity so it matters a lot to them whether how they're perceived right now in the moment in any given situation but they have a less clear understanding of how perceptions are managed over time so it's like INFJ will likely go here I'm going to plant this seed here I'm going to harvest the epi fruit later that's the sort of thing INFJ does ENTP does that stuff too, not as well as INFJ, but better than say ISFJ. So it's a it's a bit of a uh, challenging back and forth because it's a matter of the aspects of things. I'm TI metaphysical aspect, which means that along with NE, I'm going to be particularly effective in verbal improvisation and speaking in general and managing words and stuff. 
but I'm also that also means I'm going to be a cross time or turn based FE. So I'm going to be not very attentive to people's reactions in the moment as I think that they're not that's the sort of thing that I after after an event's over I go back and I go okay, well here's what happened FE wise and here's how I can deal with that or here's how I can spin that or whatever or you know maybe it's regardless of whether a lot of times it's positive it could be really positive um, in any environment that has some openness to it there has to be a little bit of openness because I'm not I'm not going to be the most ordinary person there. And I'm not going to be the most socially risk averse. Of course, if I, if I were to go into a party <laughs> and I had a, a strong teammate who was behind me, then it would probably play out a lot differently. But when I'm trying to carry somebody who's working against me most of the time, it's a bit of a challenge. Anyway, that's my video on intelligence and... Uh, and the ENTP, thank you for the comment. I appreciate it. And I hope this was um, il illuminatory in some fashion. Don't forget to eat plenty of cheese. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate that.